Hello guys and girls, this is Tommy Olsen from Amorphis. Greetings from Finland. And you are watching Loud TV. Hello Tommy. Again, it's may maybe our third interview with you on uh, Loud TV. Always a, a great pleasure to to discover a new album and uh, to have a chat with you. So, how are you doing in Finland, right? Yes, I'm here in Finland at my home city, and um, it's it's really slippery here. It's like we had snow a couple of days ago, but uh, now it's been a little bit more warm. It's been more warmer, and uh, the snow is all almost gone, and it's you know it's disaster to go all outside trying to walk. It's horrible, but so far it's it's been great. Thanks for asking. <laughs> and uh, yeah, does does snow a good thing for you to that inspires you? In uh... well, snow is it, it's it's great because uh, the winters here in in Finland they are really dark, and uh, if you don't have any snow, it's even darker. It's it's horrible, you know. The time before Christmas. Uh, uh, January is mostly the the best winter uh, month, and uh, normally there are snow. Of course, in the in in the north there are there are snow, but here in in, in south we don't have snow that much anymore, and it it makes the whole country so so dark. If if you have plenty of snow, even if there is no light. It's a little bit brighter because the white snow gives more light, but, uh, but now it's like living in, in fucking darkness. It seems that um, yeah, people from the north are always uh, inspired by nature more than uh, uh, I would say occidental people like uh, us, you know, in France or in the USA. I think, uh, but thanks to the COVID. I think we are more and more connected to the nature, to nature. Yeah, and that's a good thing. I think if people are connecting more to the nature, maybe they respect also it more, and maybe they have some new ideas that uh, would be nice to do something for for the environment and for the pollution. But uh, yeah, Finland is quite big country compared to how many people live here. It's it's only like five and a half million people living here and the country is quite big. So we have lot, lots of nature everywhere. And uh, forests and, and lakes and, and stuff. So we have used to live in, not in the middle middle of nature, but, but, but nature is almost everywhere. For example, you don't have to walk only maybe half an hour or something from the center of the Helsinki, and you you might be somewhere in a forest. <laughs> so yeah, it's nature is really powerful and and big, and and it makes you feel really small. It makes you understand that you are not the most important thing here in the earth, and and uh, that that's helps you to understand stand your place in 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 worlds and in universe and um, maybe when you see the forest and lakes everywhere you totally understand that nature is more important than for example human beings <laughs> it's a little bit sad opinion but that's how i see it yeah and yes maybe the thanks or because of this covid situation uh maybe we become more misanthropic or yeah it's you you can see the the foolishness of uh, <laughs> of yeah. the, of our humanity yeah of course it's it's really bad that people are dying and and uh, i really hate it i hate the fucking coronavirus but as a uh, if you think human being as a whole, I think we have deserved this in a way. <laughs> Let's go back to, to to your new album, Allo. Uh, yeah. This is the the, four, the the 14th album 
of uh, Amorphis and the eighth album with you. Um, time flies, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it's been a long journey, but on the other hand, it, it feels that I, I joined the band just a couple of years ago. <laughs> but it, it's been great. And uh, I didn't know what to expect when, when I joined the band. Is it 16 years ago or something like this? And uh, yeah, it's it's been interesting and it's been full of uh, different uh, feelings and different experiences. And uh, I guess I'm totally different person than I was in that moment. But I think the career with Amorphis, I hope it ha haven't changed me too much. But of course, it leaves a uh, mark in your soul or in your body when you have done this kind of thing so many years and uh, I'm just ha happy that I, I got the opportunity to uh, to to get everything what I've got so far what what did you do before joining uh, amorphis did you work in yes the... I was working in uh, local youth cafe or youth house i was working there and uh, actually i still do some kind of social work not that much of course but uh i still work every week not every day but maybe three or four days in a week now it's been easier because of this corona of course and of course in other way uh, this job also saved my life <laughs> money wise but uh, there was a couple of years, maybe five or six years, that I didn't do anything else than Amorphis. And, uh, but uh, I think it's good to have some other work, not like a real work, but it, it, it's good to do some, something else uh, than only music. It, it gives you a little bit distance for your band and you can... Uh, think other things than music or touring. So I think mentally it's a good thing to have something else than only music. If you are doing like a U US tour six weeks, 35 shows or something like this, and, and you start to imagine, okay, I'm a rock star, and, and, and then you come back home and go back to your day job, you realize that you're just a normal guy, you know? <laughs> so you don't have to act like a fucking idiot. So I think it, it helps to helps to keep your feet on the ground. It's it's a good lesson that you are just an average guy, so to speak. So about the, this new album, did you have more time to write this uh, Halo album? Like uh, maybe ninety percent of the band, uh, ninety percent of the bands are they they got yeah many months to 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 make the pre-production and to 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 concentrate more on the songs did you uh i don't know if we had any more time to compose stuff i think the material came out from the guy who composed stuff pretty much at the same schedule than with the previous albums but uh, but now we had more time to spend in studio or to record stuff. And for me personally, it, it was great because it took so many days to finish the album. And uh, it was a big challenge. I had to travel to Helsinki where I recorded everything. I think I went uh, there like 35 times or something like this. So it was a big, big job for me. But on the other hand, it was fantastic to realize that we are doing a great album again i i understood that, that this is a great quality again and uh, it gave me motivation to travel to helsinki so many times and uh yeah when you start to do new album you never know what happens and, and when you are listening to the first tracks you are thinking okay is this good enough for the album or do people still like this kind of stuff? But now when I'm listening to the whole album, I think we managed again to do an interesting metal album. Yeah, and you, you said you, you went to, to Helsinki. 
uh, contrary to, to the previous albums, because you couldn't uh, fly to Sweden to Jens Bogren uh, studio. Um, so I think he, he tried to to come to Helsinki, but he, he, he didn't manage or something like this. He actually, uh, when I'm thinking it now, he, he came once here. He had already planned was, was to come here to Finland and spend like five days or something. And uh, then something happened in the border or in an airport in Sweden. And he didn't get permission to come to Finland. So we had to cancel that one. But in the really final days of the recording process, he, he came to Helsinki and spent here two or three days. And, and we finalized my vocals. Of course, we worked with him. Uh, we talked with him every every time we recorded something with Jonas Olsen, who was uh, recording stuff with me in Helsinki. And uh, of course, we had to get like a permission if this is good or bad line. But uh, it helped a lot that Jonas and Jens, they are good friends. They have known each other maybe 20 years or something. They really trust each other pretty well, so it helps a lot. And uh, we didn't have like free hands, but mostly we we try to just create interesting stuff with Jonas and, and we just hope that Jens will also like it. And in, in mostly cases it was like that. It's funny because uh, this new album is uh, it's really in the continuation of uh, Queen of Time and Under the Red Cloud. It's uh, really, you know, it's really like a slow wave, you know, and Amorphis mm. is, uh, is going on and uh, it's it's quite natural and very homogenic, you know, albums through the, through the maybe the last decade. That's that's good to hear. That's something that we maybe wanted to do, but there is a trap, of course, that the, the albums are too much the same. And uh, of course, uh, it he it helps them that we had like same producer and, and same same cover artist for this album. So somehow it might feel to the listeners that this is something that we already know <laughs> in a way. So, but I, I hope that this album is not too safe. I, I hope that this will challenge the listener and, and uh, I hope they have to listen it a couple of times. I hope this is not those albums you listen once and you forget it immediately. Not, not really, I would say, because, yeah. uh, you know, when you listen to your album, especially the last ones, you know, and, you know, it's always, it seems like it's always a hit, you know, the, 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 the songs are, they go really straight to the, to the brain, to the, to the mind, and uh, yeah, yeah. it's quite easy to recognize, but I must admit that I feel, um, that uh, uh, Santeri, your keyboard player, yeah. was very, very inspired on this album. Well, well, Santeri, he he composed stuff for for this one, and I know that he also recorded shitloads of stuff, like church organs, and and he has lots of cool vintage uh, organs or keyboards, and he did lots of work. And when you listen to the final album. The keyboards are a little bit uh, in back on this album. I, I think this is more guitar oriented, and I don't, I, I don't know if Sandra is frustrated or angry about it. Maybe a little bit disappointed or something. But uh, we just have to respect Jens Booker as a producer because uh, he had some kind of picture of the whole album, and. Uh, when you're listening to the album, this is his point of view of our music, and uh, I 100% trust him as a producer. And uh, Sandra is he's a really talented musician. He, he can play almost everything and can play wonderful solos, and, and, and 
he also understands also he can find he can find always interesting sounds he's a big friend of sounds of from 80s <laughs> and they are quite surprising sometimes and uh, but i must admit when we are going to play these songs on stage i think they will sound different i think the keyboards might be more in front when we are playing live shows and it's it's great that the song band that that the songs are not sounding 100% the same than from in, in the album so let's see which is good you know when you it is you <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you can recognize, of course, the song, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's good, you know, to to have a different version alive. It is, it is, and it's uh, uh, because we are doing quite big shows at this point in our career, and we have lots of technical stuff going in the background. We have uh, some choirs coming from the backing track and stuff like that and we have in-ear monitors and uh, we have click in our ears also so we cannot change the set, li set list that much during the tour and uh, when we are going for example to the US tour after a couple of months I hope it will happen we are trying to pick maybe 16 17 songs we can play and, and we're trying to put up an uh, interesting set list that works and uh, so we can change only a couple of songs during the tour, which is kind of boring, but at the same time, it helps keep a good level of the shows when we are not changing that much elements during the show or during the tour. Okay. Uh, what about the, the Pekka, Pekka lyrics, yeah. uh, the, so the songwriter of, uh, of the lyrics, of the amorphous lyrics? Uh, did you did you discover new new elements in these topics? And what's the the main topic of uh, of this Halo album? I must say that this is not like a concept album, but uh, I think you can find things that are happening now in, in in the world. You can find some reflections from the lyrics. I think one. Uh, idea of the album is is that uh, people are traveling to the new place and, and trying to build a new civilization somewhere and uh, that's that's one one thing that he is thinking about thinking about in, in these lyrics and uh, there is one also one love song that he wrote maybe 20 40 years ago or 30 years ago or he, his wife or girlfriend, I don't know. And now it's finally in Amorphis album, which is kind of weird thing to think, weird thing to realize. And um, yeah, I was also a little bit curious about the song called Windmaid because the song is about whores. And I, I think it's really weird to play in a heavy metal band and sing about whores. I was like, what the fuck? But uh, when I'm listening to the song now, I think the lyrics and the themes on the lyrics, they fit pretty well on the song somehow. Because um, I think when you're listening to the, uh, the verses, I think you can see almost like horse running. And uh, when you're listening to the uh, chorus, you can see a beautiful uh, horse flowing somewhere somewhere <laughs> I don't know where but I think the verse is really mystical music wise and uh, it's a good good fit again um, but this artwork that we can see yeah. between uh, night and day and the duality of the of the colors and was it something a highlight for in in the lyrics or well, just, uh, uh, I think uh, Val Noir who, who did cover art for this one he always wants a French to guy yeah, a French, guy. French guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Noir. I don't know how to pronounce <laughs> it, <laughs> but yeah. But he did a great job again, and he always wants to have uh, lyrics, of course, and uh, he always 
wants to know if we have any any ideas about the cover art and and mostly we have some rough ideas but on the other hand we want to give him a free hands as an artist and uh, we worked with with a couple of ideas and uh, we had to talk many times we had to argue a little bit of course because we are artists <laughs> but in the end i i think he made a fantastic job and uh, it's it's really beautiful and it's 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 going to be so beautiful when we are going to play shows and we can use this beautiful artwork as a background art so really looking forward how the stage will be i, I think fans will love it the last song is quite different there is a, a duet with a, a female singer yeah. who is she she's uh, from sweden and uh, her name is petronella Nedermalm. and uh, jens had a dream he have had this dream many years because he really loves the band where petra Nella is singing it's called Patos. it's a swedish progressive band from from 90s i i don't know if they are they are still i think they are still active but uh he really loves the album or, or the albums from that band and uh, he had a dream that he would like to uh, work with with petronella and, and now we had a chance to call her and and, and do her beautiful lines here and there and it was a great great decision and uh, i really love how how this last song ended up i, I think our voices fit perfectly together and it, it makes the song bigger and more interesting when we have also female singer on this one uh and now to to finish this uh interview uh you're going to to tour hopefully in the us first yeah maybe Maybe doing uh, barbecues with uh, Danny in the US. <laughs> <laughs> Would be nice to go there to states, but uh, it's really difficult to be optimistic. But I, I just really hope that it will happen. And would be nice to do some barbecue in states and do some barbecue also in festivals in in, in Europe. And uh, to be honest, I'm I'm more optimistic with the summer festivals. Uh, in in Europe, I think I really hope that they will happen because they are outdoor uh, even, uh, happenings. Uh, they are outdoor festivals, and uh, I think it's much easier to keep those festivals safe. And uh, let's see. And then your re- European tour uh, in the in the in the fall, right? Yeah, that's the plan. And of course, tour in in, in Finland and maybe in Russia and stuff like this. But uh, let's see, let's do this US tour first and let's see if we're still alive.